explained, we want to appreciate everything you have done. We give you all the praise and we give you the adoration. Father, we entrust today's studies into thy care, that you will come and give us wisdom from above to study and understand. We also pray for retentive memory, that you will shower it on us in the name of Jesus, that when the day of accountability is due, we shall be able to produce whatever we have learned here. Father, even as we do this, let your blessing continue to dwell on us. Let your favor and your grace continue to dwell on us. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much, Osofusi Mama. And then we zoom straight to our New Testament survey. In fact, if we aren't able to, if we aren't able to do this New Testament, uh, to become difficult for us. So we zoom straight to the New Testament survey. Um, the reason is that time is on our side, so I want us to finish some of these things quickly. Then we continue with the rest. So, okay, we zoom straight into it. Um, as you already know, the Old Testament carries the journey of the Israelites starting with the creation and then coming into Abraham. Before Abraham, there was Noah. Then after the flood, there was another generation moving on. Then Abraham came in. And when Abraham came in, then we started having another generation being formed with Sarah, Abraham and Sarah's children where we have Isaac coming in there. And then through Isaac, we got his sons, Jacob, leading the next generation. And then he moves on to the people of Israel, where we had Joseph being sold into slavery. Okay. And once Joseph was sold into slavery, through the act of Joseph, we later had the people of Israel getting um, saved from the family that was ongoing. And then we moved straight to another angle where they came to the Exodus period where Moses came to take them out of the slavery in Egypt. Then they moved on to the land of Cana. We have another record where after living in Cana at a point in time, Samuel, who was a prophet, a judge, and a priest came into being, took hold of them. Before him, there was a period of the judges. And then after Samuel came, saw the king. After saw the king, came David. That was when Saul had sinned against God, disobeyed God, and God was no longer interested in his reign as a king. David came in a wonderful generation altogether period of kingdom. The land was established. They were able to make more, um, conquer more battles, and then was able to expand the territory of the Israel kingdom. Then came in, Solomon. Solomon also came in the golden era of Israel. And then his son, Rehoboam, came to jeopardize the whole system where the kingdom was divided. And Jehoboam took one half, Rehoboam took the other half. Then we had the prophets came in, Elijah, Elisha. We got the whole lot of prophets coming in. And then Isaiah, all of them. Safania, Habakkuk, Hosea, and the rest. But the whole thing has been that Israel was looking for someone who redeemed them. Because constantly, 
there was the apostasy, as I explained to you. They will go before God, and then at a point in time, get off from God, and then God will have to punish them. You go into slavery. Later, they repent, they come back, God accept them, and then they will go back again into sin. There was so much. So there came an era where Israel was under slavery, and their masters at the time, slave masters, were the Romans at this point in time. They were all looking forward to a savior, a redeemer. Someone recall the Messiah, who will come and take them from their slavery. There have been so many prophecies about this deliverer coming in, and they have been waiting anxiously for him. The New Testament era is the era where this deliverer came into being. It is the era where we have someone coming in and that someone being called Jesus, Emmanuel, and then he coming as the Messiah. The story about this gentleman can be found in the New Testament. And then he came in, he was crucified, died and buried, he rose again, ascended into heaven. And what happened after is what we are going to look at in the New Testament. This is just a short intro as to why we are now in the New Testament era. So in the New Testament, there are 27 different books in the New Testament. Now this book ranges from the lengthy ones, which has to do with the gospel, and the longest, that is the gospel according to Luke being the longest book in the New Testament to the shortest book, which is the short book of the New Testament has to do with the third John. The books are arranged into seven categories. So these 27 books of the New Testament are arranged in seven categories, or what we say seven classes. The first class of the New Testament books is what we call the Gospels. Now, the Gospel is made up of four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are named after the individuals who we believe to have been the authors of the Gospels. So Matthew, we believe, was written by Matthew. Mark was written by Mark. Luke by Luke, John by John. However, I might sound this to you that at a higher level of education, when you get into the theology, theological schools, you'll get to know that they are not the original authors, especially Matthew, and then Mark. Um, Luke was an educated man, was a physician, John, we take it to be. But at least Matthew, at a higher level, there'll be so much argument and you get to know that there are other things that we, we were taught in children's service and we have known all this while, well, but it doesn't look like so. So these four books that we call the gospel gives a report of the life ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, I might say that it gives us four different versions of the same basic story. It's just like as we have here, Rafi, Isa, Edwin, and Sim Oche, all have witnessed a scene. So all of them are given as a story. I remember back days when we were young, when you go to watch a movie, and then you come, what do you do? We bad moving. I don't know whether you guys also experience those things. Hey, back me moving. Those are the things that we say. Back me moving. Then you to say yours. And say, hey, who may be an killer and shoot too, you know? Maybe a blow money. And these are the things that you get someone, the same movie we have watched. You get different versions of it from the same 
uh, from different people. So that is how the gospel looks like. Matthew gives his account, Mark gives his account, Luke, John, all of them are talking about the life, ministry, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is it. Sometimes they overlap. It's just like the way we do things. They overlap. When we are giving a story, oh, you say something, so I will say the same thing. There are sometimes you say something, another person will not say it. So there are differences sometimes, and sometimes they overlap in it. Please, you prompt me if you have a question. So as we go, if you have a question, quickly prompt me. You can raise up your hand or you can unmute or, yes, you can text as well so that we just go over it. We take your question. However, these four books, three of them can be put together to be called as not a God source. Three of them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We have put them together to call them Synoptic Gospels. However, John, which is the fourth gospel, um, appears to be different from these three first three gospels. Again, when you go to higher level, you get to know that Mark, for instance, was the first gospel, not Matthew. Mark was the first gospel to be written. And then it, you, you get to know that if you look at Mark, Matthew really took the gospel of Mark, Matthew and Luke, and they expanded it. That is another story for us. So, what are we talking about? Luke, Mark, um, John is a different class on its own. So these three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we call them synoptic gospels. Why? Because we can view them on the same level. We can see them together. We can, when you look at the content, they are the same. When you look at some of the way they are presented it, they are the same. So there are similarities. They seem to follow a certain kind of genre, like they move in a certain level, unlike John. So that gives us the first category in the New Testament. And this category is made up of how many books? Four books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are known as the Snorted Gospel. Okay. The next book category has to do with the early church book. This is the book of Acts, or what we say, the Acts of the Apostles. When you read the book of Acts, it looks like a part two of the Gospel of Luke. We know Luke wrote it, so it looked like a continuation of what happened after the death and the ascension of Jesus Christ. So to understand the Acts of the Apostle, that is the Acts, the book of Acts very well. Sometimes we advise that you read the gospel according to Luke, and then you follow it up with the book of Acts. You see that it is just a continuation as a part two of the story. The reason we say that it's a category on its own is that that is the only book that gives us immediate account of what happened after the ascension of Jesus Christ. So it is in that book that we get to know what Jesus, the disciples went to wait at Jerusalem, waiting for the, uh, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came, they set out, Peter set out to preach. We had so many people, 3,000 people just giving their life to Christ. We get, so it, that is where we get to know all the story. We get to know the account of Paul, how Paul was saved and all those. So it is the immediate book that gives us the whole story. Now, it's a category on its own. The next category is the third category. Is the letters from Paul to the churches. The letters from Paul to the churches. Now, there are nine letters of Paul to the churches alone, nine. And these nine letters from Paul to the churches are Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, 
Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, and 2 Thessalonians. The names of these books are given to the geographical location of, the, uh, of where they were sent to. So example, the book of Ephesians, for instance, the letter from Paul to the Ephesus is called what Ephesians. So that is what you have to note. So the letter to the Roman church is called what Romans. The letter to the Corinthian church is called what Corinthians. So that's where the first letter and the second letter. Again, if you go into the theology, you get to know that it looked like second Corinthians was written before first Corinthians. That's another thing that you get to know later on. At this level, that is what we have. And these are all arguments. These are all scholarly arguments. These things are mentioned. First Corinthians, second Corinthians issue. Paul is the author of these nine books. Now, they, pre they are presented in the New Testament from Romans, which is the longest. So if you are taking the books written to the churches, it looked to be arranged in a certain order. It starts with Romans, which is the longest, and it ends with 2 Thessalonians, which is the shortest. So the letters to the churches, when you start arranging them, it starts from Romans according to the way they appear in the, the New Testament and ends on 2 Thessalonians. And these letters, Romans is the longest, 2 Thessalonians is the shortest. The fourth category has to do with Paul's letters to the individuals. Now, there are four of these letters. We have 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. They are named after the individuals to whom the letters were sent. So, Timothy, the first Timothy means that the first letter that was sent to who? Timothy by Paul. Second Timothy means that the second letter that was sent to Timothy by Paul. So, it applies to Titus and Philemon. Again, here too, in the New Testament, we realize that they have been arranged in order of length. If you take these letters, four letters, first Timothy appears first, which is the longest, and Philemon appears last, which is the shortest. Paul is the author. Now, if you are taking these four, these four of, the, of, of these letters, plus the nine letters here, all from Paul, meaning that in total, Paul wrote how many letters? 13 letters, and these are all captured in as a form of books in the New Testament. So out of the 27 books of the New Testament, Paul alone authored 13 of them, 13 of them. We have to note that First Timothy, Second Timothy and Titus are known as pastoral letters. Why? Timothy and Titus were part, partners of Paul. He was in ministry with them. So they would say that co-workers, co as of a colleague, as of was. So they are known as pastoral letters, pastoral letters. The fifth category has to do with the letter to the Hebrews. The letter to the Hebrews. This one is a class of its own. The author actually, we don't know. Some even attribute it to be poor. But if you look at the Pauline, one of the calls she'll be doing at the seminary, when you're doing Pauline studies, that's putting all the letters of Paul, they seem to follow a certain trend. Hebrews doesn't follow that trend. So we say the author is unknown. However, it was written to the Christian Hebrews or the Jewish Christians who lived at the time. So that's why we call the Hebrews. Also for Sim Autry, your hand is up. Any question? Okay, thank you, Papa. Um, concerning Paul's letters, um, 
Which of them did he write when he was in prison? The ones he wrote in prison, I will have to put that one two together for you. I know some, but I don't know whether that's all. I hope you get it. Okay. Papa, yeah, so I'll you. just I'll just get those ones listed for you. I know some of them here, but I don't know whether that is all. So just not to um, put myself in any confusion, I'll get them for you. Thank you, Papa Sam Ochoa. Thank you, Papa. Okay, so we continue, right? Okay, letters by others form the next category. Letters by others forms the next category. And in these letters, there are seven of them. Now, these letters were not written by Paul. They were written by others. And then they were named after those who wrote them. So James, the book of James, Peter, first Peter, second Peter, first John, second John, third John, Jude. So James was written by James, Peter, first and second Peter by Peter, first, second, third John by John, Jude by Jude. That is how these letters are. They are known as the general epistles or letters. Or sometimes we say that the Catholic epistles. Now, the Catholic here does not refer to the Roman Catholic Church, simply the universal Catholic, just as we say in Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ. I believe in that when you get to the Catholic, do you get it? So it's not the word Catholic Church, but the universal church. That is what we call the Catholic here. So these are the general epistles or letters of the Catholic epistles. The last category has to do with what we call the Apocalypse. Now these apocalyptic books has to be with the book of Revelation, talking about the end time, the end time. What is going to happen at the end of the, at the end of the universe, we never know. At the end of the world, what is going to happen? When you read the uh, Matthew, for instance, have a little bit of it, the later part of Matthew, we get some of the end times, signs of the end times there. But the book that talks about the end times so has to be with the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation that has to do with the end time. Okay. So at this point, we do the calculation as to whether we have 27 books. Gospels are four, okay? So the next one is what? The next category, many are the one, making five. This one is nine. Five plus nine will give us what? 14. 14. We have four here, plus four, 18. 18. Plus one, 19. 19. Plus seven. Mm -hmm. 26. 26 plus one. 26. 26. So we have our 27 books of the New Testament complete. Any question before we go to the first category, which has to do with the Gospels? So you are going to take all the categories one after the other in the days ahead of us. The Gospels. Any question before we go to the first category? Uh, uh, Papa, the James. Yes. You no, know, we have two James, the, the, uh, the brother of Jesus and then James the Apostles, so which of them? Is the James Apostles. That's what we know. Okay. Yeah. The brother of Jesus became a leader of the church. When you're doing church history at the seminar, you get to know that he became one of the leaders at the I think to be in Jerusalem, yes, when the um, Nancy met, yes, Nancy yes. Creed and those things, yeah, he was one of the leaders at the time. You get to know that when Paul, for instance, got saved, when uh, he met the angel and decided to change, he has to meet the leadership at Jerusalem. And James was one of the leaders. In fact, I, um, we are told by church, you see, that he became even one of the, the leaders of the church. In fact, not just one of them, became a leader. The, the, head, the, the head of the council. Yes, that kind of thing. I'm sure that he was going over, he was taking um, his brother's place. Within the brother, the inheritance. 
Okay, so the Gospels. Now, let's quickly look at the gospel, things in the gospels. One, the gospels has a presentation of Jesus Christ. I told you that it talks about the life, the ministry, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the main thing in the gospel has to do and how it present Jesus Christ. Now, the four gospels have their unique way of presenting Jesus Christ. The gospel of Matthew, for instance, presents Jesus Christ as the one who abides with his people until the end of the time. Now he founds the church and then in each sins are forgiven, prayers and answered, and then the power of death is overcome. That is how Matthew presents Jesus Christ. Let's read Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 to 19. Someone should also open Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 to 20. So first one, open Matthew 16, 18 to 19. Another open Matthew chapter 18, 20. Chapter 18, 18 to 20. Who is reading first? Yes. Okay. 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 Osofu, please type your question. Your mic isn't good. Yes, Papa. So type your question for us. Psalm says Paul wrote seven letters. Paul, is that Paul wrote how many? Okay. Osofu, we can't hear, so please type the question. Yes, Psalm says he wrote seven books. Seven letters. Yes, yeah, seven letters. And I wanted to... Uh, wow, I, I've never heard this argument, Joe. This is the first time. And which were those letters that you mentioned? This is the first time you have it. Um... I'm sorry, Osofo's Osofo's line isn't helping us. So we will move on. Osofo Zimmerman. Osofo Zimmerman. Yes, Osofo Zimmerman. Yeah. Please, I read from Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Okay, so Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Yes, we are listening. And so I tell all of you, mm -hmm. what bit on earth will be prohibited in heaven? Mm -hmm. And what bit on earth shall be permitted in heaven? Mm -hmm. And I tell you more. Whenever two of you on earth agree about anything you pray for, it will be done for you by your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. For where two four or three come together in my name, I am there with them. Amen. Amen. So this is Jesus who prays about giving authority. Do you get it? He's always with his people. So authority is with you. When he say A, it is A there. He, buy, he lives with the people to the end of the time. So the, it is timeless. When the people are together, they pray, answers will come. I don't know whether you get it. That is how Jesus is portrayed, as the one who has authority over all these things. So let's read the 18, Matthew 18. That's what he read. No, he read, you read Matthew 16. No, please, the 18. 18, so Matthew 16, sorry. Let's read Matthew 16. So, Matthew, Matthew 16. 16. Yes. Matthew 16, 19. 19. Mm -hmm. I read. And I tell you that you are Peter. And mm -hmm. on this rock, I will build my church. And the gate of height shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. 
Amen. Amen. So this is a Jesus who has total authority. Death has overcome. So death cannot stand against his church. He has the power to build the church because he is the founder. So he's going to say, I'll build my church. So the church is not built on Peter, but he said, I will build my damn that he's building it, but he's going to use Peter to be part of it. Do you get it? So that 